Okay, welcome back to our tutorial series. We are going to continue talking about PoriScript, and today we are going to go over basic movement commands, basic movement scripts. So, um, in the past we've set up this uh, new starter selection and then a basic rival script um, when we pop out with our starter. Today, we are going to make it so that after Mei comes up and battles us, she walks off the screen and then disappears. Uh, um, you know, it's something that you're probably going to want to do often. You're going to, you know, movement scripts are pretty common, um, especially when you're doing plot related, uh, you know, scripting. So we are going to start with making May move off screen. Um, so let's look at the code that I have written here that does just that. Um, so to start with, because we may as a trainer battle script, the script that we actually assign it in uh, Porimap, um, this may is a trainer may, um, we need to uh, run a script after the trainer battle that is, uh, it's, we can't just type all of our script here, you know, like you would normally think, oh, we, you know, after the trainer runs, we can just type lock all, we can type move, do movement, you know, all of this inside here, but this won't run uh, until you click on May again. After the trainer battle script, after the trainer battle macro is done, and it calls the C code and does the battle engine and it's over, it skips everything. It skips out of the script. This message box here only runs when you click on May again. You know, it's not going to, um, it's not going to run if you try to put the movement scripts here. We have to, as the fourth parameter, the fourth argument for um, the trainer battle um, event, it is right here. You can see event script. It's normally set equal to false, but you can pass it an event script that will be ran immediately after the battle is over. So we're going to create this new battle over script, rival battle over, right here, and we're going to pass that to the trainer battle command so that it runs right afterwards and may leaves right afterwards. We don't have to click on her again. So it's going to start lock all, like a lot of things do, um, and then right away we are at the command that does the movement. It does everything, you know, pretty much. The apply movement command. The first argument, 10, is the object ID of the object we are trying to move. So we are moving May, so May's object ID is 10. So 10 is the, um, the first parameter that we are giving apply movement. If you were trying to move a different object, it would be that different object's object ID. Um, and the second argument is the movement script itself that we are calling. Now the movement script we have defined down here, and in Pori script this is how we define them. We have the movement script command, and then the name of the movement script, and then the curly brace, just like you define anything else. Um, just like you define the script, just like you define the new Pori script Pokemarts with the mark command. So we use the movement command and the name of the movement. Now the movements are pretty simple. Um, we have face terms depending on the direction. You can face in all the directions and you can walk in all of the directions. Um, walk down will make you walk down one space. Walk left will make you walk left one space. Walk left again will make you walk left another, you know, an, again in that direction. And it'll automatically turn you in the direction that you're moving in. Um, so you don't have to use the face uh, face down anytime you want to walk down or something like that. It'll do it automatically. Um, but you can also use this face uh, down. It's not that important though. Um, you can, in PoriScript, you can multiply your movements if you want to, uh, you know, move a certain number of times. So here for May, uh, May is going to pop up here. We're going to be here. So for us, um, eight marks where the end of the map is. So we want May to move, since May is one, you know, away from us, we want May to move seven. Seven to the left, you can see up there, seven to the left. Now, if we wanted to move up, if we wanted her to disappear off the top, we'd also need her to move, you know, we would want her to move here, and then we want her to move six up. But if you're going off the left, it's seven that you have to move to get out of range of the player being able to see you because we're going to want to remove the object afterwards and we don't want to see the object disappear so we want her to move all the way off screen before the object is removed um, now in this case we are just going to move down one and then move over seven and then that's going to be enough to get us off screen we don't even have to move down one we could just move over seven but I wanted you to see the actual changing direction of the movements when we look over how it works. 
But here, since we wanted to just move 7 over, we're just doing walk left times 7. And that will just expand when we go to the dot .inc, uh, you know, when PoriScript compiles it, into 7 different walk lefts back to back. You can write them all out if you want to, or you can just use the time 7. Um, so the face down and the walk, the face and walk are the two main commands that you will be using when you are doing movements. Um, it covers pretty much everything you're going to want to do. Um, so here we apply this movement, we are going to wait for the movement to end, then we are going to remove object 10, again 10 is the ID for May, then we are going to set May's flag, and then we are going to set little root state equal to 1. Now this part you can skip over if you're not actually following our uh, our like rival setup, our like new starter setup, our new plot setup in little root, um, but it's it's not important if you just wanted to know how to make a movement. So you know you can pause the video uh, and skip to when we test it out, or you can just you know pause the video for good. But so with our our rival, we had it set up with this setup rival battle script. This script gets called every time we load into the map. We had it set up that if you hadn't picked up a pokeball, then we set your rival's flag. Uh, so that it didn't show. And then else, no matter what, we had it clear the flag. So once you picked up the Pokeball, it would clear the flag. It would always clear the flag every single time you loaded into the map. Now we don't want that to happen anymore because we want May to disappear and we don't want her to come back. Um, so we are going to create this little root state va variable and we're going to use it a couple times uh, as we do our plot scripting in little root uh, as we expand more. Um, but for this video, we are going to have just the state 0 and the state 1. Um, when it's set to 0, which we set all the time, if you haven't picked up a Pokeball, Little Roots in town in state 0. State 0 pretty much means you haven't picked up a Pokeball yet. You don't have a Pokemon. So anything that we want to happen when you haven't, when you don't have a Pokeball, we run when state is equal to 0. Um, but then when we when the rival battle's over, we set the state equal to 1. That way, the flag is only cleared if you haven't beaten May. But if you have beat May, then the flag doesn't get cleared anymore because now the state is equal to 1. Um, so that's how, you know, we handle that. The little root, uh, like the main scripts for little root actually handle it in pretty much the exact same way. Um, there's this variable little root town state and you can take over this variable if you want if you know for sure you're erasing all of this stuff um, if you're getting completely rid of all of the little root scripting all of the plot stuff all of the um, you know the professor birch and you know truck stuff you can take over this little root town state variable um, but you have to be careful if you're going to do that and make sure you've actually gotten rid of everything and make sure nothing else outside of little root calls it because i'm not 100% sure on that. It shouldn't, but it's possible it does. Um, but anyway, um, we uh, just created our own variable. Uh, we, I just went to vars.h and just took over a variable, just an unused variable. Um, so and then we set our flag and then we set the var so the flag doesn't get cleared anymore. And then we wait message, which actually doesn't really need to exist because there's no message at that point. And then we release we release all just to be safe. Um, so now that May's gone, we can technically get rid of this message box because it's never going to be, like you're never going to be able to click on May um, because once the battle's over, May is going to move, it's going to be removed, and then the, she's never going to be added back to the game. Um, so that's, this is basic movement. Um, we are now going to, I've already compiled, so we can just see what it looks like. Um, we've just picked up our Pokemon in game, and we are going to walk outside. May sees us, she comes up to us, she starts the battle. We're gonna fast forward through it. Energy Ball, Trico fainted. And here we go. We're about to see what it looks like. So May's gonna face down, walk off, and then disappear. As we see, May's gone. And as you see over here, this flower, when we are here, the flower is the first thing, you know, we can't see. So that's how, you know, like here, uh, we're right here. We want it to be eight away from here. But since again, May is starting on this block and we are here, our window ends, ends here. Um, we only need May to go seven instead of the full eight from our position. 
Um, so yeah, that's basic movement. Um, you can do a lot with that. You can, uh, you know, you can script more with the professor, the professor Birch. You can have him come up to you when you walk in. Um, you can have him come up to you when you pick a pokeball. You can have May come in if you want. You can spawn her in and like come and attack you up here instead of being instead of waiting outside of this door. Um, you know, you can add the movement scripts anywhere inside of your game. Uh, so that is all we are going to talk about for this video. Um, so if you have any comments or questions, make sure to leave them and uh, we'll see you on the next one.